It's all here on your afternoon show. Kevin Cole with you. I'm down in the performance space with Jeremy Enoch and, uh, and orchestra. This is awesome. It's awesome to be here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, just loved the live set at Upstream a year ago. You've been touring a lot since then. Yeah, yeah, we just got, we're ending a five-week uh, U.S. tour. And uh, you are playing uh, a lot of songs from the reissue of, well, in celebration of the reissue of Return of the Frog Queen. How about uh, starting out with a couple? Uh, you got it. Cool. <laughs> Time to see where you went, Abigail Moving through how tell a water to spill
Jeremy Enoch and Band, Lizard and Abigail Ann, both uh, can be found on Return of the Frog Queen. Came out originally in 1996 and sounding huge and orchestral, but we don't have an orchestra here. Uh, but Jeremy, do you want to introduce uh, these uh, great musicians you have? I will do my best. <laughs> it's a lot of people to remember. Yeah. We've been on the road for five weeks, but still. We got Nils Peterson on keyboard, and we have Alina Toe on violin. Taylor Ray Jensen on the cello. Over here we have Jeremy Bowler on guitar, Chris Staples on bass, and Kanan Tupper on drums. Thank you. It's so great uh, having you all here, sounding absolutely uh, fantastic. So the album came out in uh, 96. Uh, Sub Pop reissued it in May. You've been playing songs from it. How has that experience been, and uh, how has it been uh, revisiting these songs? Uh, it's amazing. It's, uh, I'm amazed that so many people are still going out to the shows and telling me everything they're saying, you know, saying it's like a classic to them and it, is. it, it means a lot to them. And 22 years later for it to be celebrated and then for Sub Pop to also, uh, want to do it is, it means a lot to me. Nice. Um, um, and the songs are, they're my heart and my soul. They're, uh, like it's kind of my masterpiece. So I'm proud to, to represent it. Yeah. Um, is the experience playing them and feeling them different now? Like in the way you connect to the, the way you had originally written them and the subject matter? Uh, no. In fact, it's exactly the same. Wow. And when I sing the songs, and I still visualize the same things I did when I wrote the songs. They're still about the same people, Yeah. the same breakup, and I can still see those images in my head when I play it, um, which is weird. But I'm, I don't feel the heartache yeah. so much yeah. <laughs> as I did when I was 18 or 19 or whatever. How about the joy in performing them? It's amazing, and especially with, with everybody here, um, because we have just such an amazing group and uh, such professional people and fun people, and that helps bring the joy out of it. Uh, flashback 22 years to when it came out in 96. Now, you, you have people coming up to you now telling you how much it meant to them, uh, and um, me being one of them, thank you for ma making it. Awesome, beautiful record. Abigail and love it. Um, so... Um, but at the time, you uh, were on hiatus from Sunny Day Real Estate, and how was the album accepted then and, um, you know, relative to now, right? Can you, can you go back to that moment? Because it, it was a shift. Yeah, I don't know how it was accepted. You'd have to talk to people then. I, but I do think that it was quite a surprise for everybody because everybody expected me probably to do, like, a crappy Sunny Day Real Estate, like, in, like solo guy album. Yeah. And but I knew it was absolutely essential that I couldn't do that. I, I had to do something different, um, or you know, it, it just would have been lame. Yeah. So. Um, interesting, because because the songs fit. You know, you, you can now look back and, and see there is a is a flow of your work, whether it's Sunny Day or uh, Fire Theft or lo or y your own uh, solo material. But how how were you thinking about it differently? from Sunny Day, just to, to bring it quiet, to... Well, I, I mean, Sunny Day, we were on a, we were doing this indie sort of underground, uh, post-hardcore thing. Yeah. And we were, we were a part of that, that 90s time, but I have always had other influences like the Beatles and, um, Tom Waits and, a, and a, this movie, uh, Popeye, uh, with, uh, Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall. Um, uh, written by Harry Nilsson had a huge influence on this record. And, and I was like, you know, one day I was just hanging out and I was listening to Ludwig van Beethoven. I was like, I want an orchestra on this yeah. thing. This is what I want to do. I don't, I don't have to, you know, pigeonhole myself into this, this thing. I want to explore and have fun with it. And at the time it didn't really feel risky. I was just doing what my heart said. And when you follow your heart and you, you leap like that, you're always going to get caught. So. Did you say caught? Yeah, um, by, by the universe, uh, the net of the universe. That's that's what I thought you meant. Yes, for, for and uh, that is great advice. I hope everybody uh, aspiring musicians heard that. Yeah, I hope it's great advice. Be, care, be <laughs> it, careful. It it is. It is. Uh, man, there's this clip of David Bowie talking about advice he'd give young artists, and he's like, "Never play to the gallery. Just always do what what your heart tells you to do, yeah. and and go into a space that feels uncomfortable." Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, to, to keep pushing it. So I know that uh, Andrew Jocelyn did some of the ar arrangements uh, for uh, 
the the current uh, versions of the songs are they radically different I I think they're originally written for a string quartet because we had done a cathedral show uh, two years ago. And so it was it was revised for a string quartet. And then we shrunk it down to a duo. Um, And yeah, Um, but he took he he took uh, Mark Nichols original um, compositions and shrunk it down. Yeah, which is great. So um, revisiting um, this album, Return of the Frog Queen, working in newer material, too, I'm sure. And what about new new material? You had the album last year that you had uh, uh, done crowdfunding for. Right. Um, constantly working on new material? Um, yeah, I'm actually at a point right now where I don't really know what I'm doing, and it feels amazing. I've been so focused on the, the Frog Queen thing. It's so important to me. I, I wanted to do it right. After this, I'm possibly going to go and just t- go take a vacation and write. I just want to write and go to the beach or something and uh, possibly go back to Spain in October and uh, and record a new record. We'll see. Very cool. We're looking forward to that. Now, you... Um you mentioned hardcore, and I know before Sunny Day you Sunny Day you were into hardcore, and and that uh, you've I think lived in Seattle all your life. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of changes. Um, you know, the landscape, the uh, skyline, the economic uh, I don't know makeup of the city, the infrastructure. Um, you've seen a lot of changes musically. What, what, what's your sense on where things are at creatively now in Seattle? Creatively, I think we got a lot of great artists. Um, Tomo Nakayama is one of them. Yeah. And there's, uh, he's a good friend of mine who's here today. We got Andrew Jocelyn, um, of course, as well. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's changing. It's not the grunge days. It's the punk rock is gone. And in some level, it's kind of sad to see, but everything changes. All this is going to be gone one day, and you know we're, we're just we get to be here right now, and so let's just enjoy it uh, while it's here. I guess. Very cool. Well, let's uh, let's enjoy some more music. It's Jeremy Enoch uh, live here on the afternoon show. It's KEXP Seattle. Again, playing the Doug Fur Lounge tomorrow. Chop Suey on the twelfth.
It's Jeremy Enoch live on the afternoon show. The Doug Fur Lounge tomorrow, Chop Suey on Thursday.
Amazing set. Thank you so much. Thank you. So beautiful. It must be so much fun to play these songs live. It's, it's lovely. Yeah. Um, that last song, that's an on-album track, right? Ballroom Blitz? Yeah. It's, um, it was originally on a movie called The United States of Leland. Yeah. And it was never released for some reason. They never wanted to release it. But I did do a version on a 7-inch with Tomo Nakayama. Yeah, that's what I thought. And, but this is, this is like the, the full band version right here, so... Um, thanks for playing that and uh, giving listeners a treat on that. Uh, Ancient Road, right before that, from uh, your solo album last year, Ghosts, and then uh, two from Return of the Frog Queen, Fallen Heart, and Shade of the Shade in the Black Hat. That's uh, right. Beautiful transition between those two songs. Oh, thank you. So uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Jeremy Enoch, uh, playing Doug Fur Lounge tomorrow, and then uh, Chop Suey on Thursday, uh, and then hopefully going on a great vacation. Uh, yeah, and also I should mention that Chris Staples is also opening right up these shows and another amazing Seattle musician um, that you should all check out. Cool. Um, yeah, thank you again. Hope the vacation's good. Hope you find an inspiring place to write. Thank you very much. And uh, again, Jeremy Enoch here on the station where the music matters, KEXP. I want to thank uh, Jim, Justin, Scott, and Alia on uh, video. Uh, Matthew taking photographs. Kevin Suggs on sound. Uh, Matt running the board. Mitch and Henry volunteering behind the scenes. Kelsey helping out. And thanks to all the donors who make in-studio sessions like this uh, beautiful session with Jeremy Enoch possible. Thank you. It's KEXP Seattle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>